Okay, well, thank you. Hi, everybody. Good evening. My name is Mrs. Payne. I'm the head of CDM. Um, and we're just going to start off with a few introductions to the team. So, hello again. I'm Mrs. Payne. Hi, I'm Mr. Halliwell. I teach the Level 3 Cambridge Technical Media. So, I teach the Unit 1 exam and the Unit 20 Advertising Unit. And I also teach aerial photography. My name is Mr. Clayton. As part of the Cambridge Technicals course, I teach Unit 2 pre production and planning and audiovisual promos, as well as music videos. Good evening, evening everybody. I'm Mr. Colwood and I teach extended projects and also deliver AS and A level art. Okay, so we're going to talk you through um, the qualifications as part of the CDM department, including the level three Cambridge Technical in digital media, which is one of the main uh, specialisms here at UTC Sheffield. We'll also be talking to you today about EPQ a-level art and photography. If you have any questions as we go along, please use the Q&A um, feature at the bottom of your screen and we'll answer questions as we go along. And we'll also have a Q&A at the end. So to get us started then, I thought the best way for you guys to understand about the course is to hear from our students themselves. So we've got two videos here from two of our students. And we're going to start off first with Matt, who is in year 13, and he's doing the interactive, he's doing the moving image pathway. Hello, my name is Matthew. I'm currently studying creative and digital media at UTC. I've chosen the moving image pathway in year 13, and I'm also doing photography A level alongside that. A big reason I chose to come to UTC to study CDM um, was because it just has so many connections. It's a really great way to kind of connect with the industry and to learn about the industry. Uh, it's very uh, industry led. It's not really like other schools. It's very hands on. I've never really been a fan of lessons where you go in and you sit down and the teacher will talk at you for an hour. I really like that UTC's CDM course is very hands-on. You get to make things, you get to do things all the time. It's really, really great. Another thing that I like is definitely that the people in the class, all the other students are very like-minded. So it's great to connect with them. They all have very similar goals. And the third thing would definitely be that it's just such a large range of media that we cover. Um, for example, we do radio, magazine, film. It's a really kind of large spectrum uh, of the media industry that we cover in the course, which is really great. Some of the stuff uh, we've made so far in the course includes a magazine. We make the front cover, contents page and double page spread uh, of a magazine that we get to create. Uh, I'm currently working on a film for my Unit 5 work, which is very exciting. And in the future, we're going to be making our own extract from a, a radio show, which is really cool. We have connections with employers in the industry. For example, we had a talk from a filmmaker over at Steel City Media who make adventure short films, uh, which is really cool and very. we learned a lot from that. Um, I've also worked with a musician in Sheffield called Dimitri, me and another student. Uh, we worked on a music video of him, which has now got quite a lot of views on YouTube, which is really cool. Uh, so all these opportunities uh, do tend to come up and uh, it's very exciting. After UTC, I want to try and get an apprenticeship so I can just get straight into the industry um, and hopefully one day I will be in the world of film. Um, that is the aim, and I think UTC is a great starting point. Um, and now we're going to hear from Maisie, also in year 13, but she's doing the interactive pathway. Hi, my name is Maisie. I'm a year 13 student at UTC Sheffield. I'm a CDM student and I do the interactive pathway underneath that and I do art as my extra level. To me, CDM is an umbrella term for lots of different type of media. 
so like TV and film, advertising, social media, radio, anything you can think of underneath that really. And it just means that I get to go into it and experiment in all these different types of media and find what works for me. I joined UTC because I was really interested in media. I was quite a creative person already and I just wanted to explore that and be in a place that is tailored for that. I enjoy the creative freedom that comes with the briefs that were set for work so that it might be a brief but I can like manipulate my target audience to be something I'm interested in, I can manip manipulate the topic to be something I'm interested in and that's like really important to me because it means I can like put a little bit of myself in my projects. We generally use the Adobe Suite for a lot of it which is provided at college so that I they are the industry standard and um, I've made everything from advertising materials to music videos to websites honestly the list is endless my favorite thing that I've done was for something called unit 20 which is an advertising unit and I got to work with a client called Hannah on a project called for Nosh Now and I was making her promotional materials for her startup company and it was like my first taste of working with a client and what that whole thing is like. Uh, I'm planning to go on to Sheffield Hallam University to do an advertising and marketing degree as that's what I found interested me the most throughout my time at UTC Sheffield. Okay, so you heard from our students direct there in regards to the options available to you, the range of different products you guys get to make, and yeah, the fun we have here in producing all these amazing products and all these amazing people that we work with. Here are some new stories from the CDM department recently. So Rise Mentoring, so that is an organization that offers post-16 students, um, females, the chance to work and be mentored by people in industry. So we've got three students doing that currently across from advertising to post-production and just being mentored and getting that support from somebody who is directly in industry. Down at the bottom here, one of our year 11 students, um, Rosie, she entered a photography competition and was part of the Holocaust Memorial Day brochure. Their theme was Be the Light in the Darkness and her photography got used in that as part of that national campaign, which is fantastic. And we've also here got at the top, um, Shimla and Emma, who are part of a band and in year 11, they got picked up by BBC Sounds and some of their original tracks got played on BBC Radio Sheffield. So there's lots going on here um, in the CDM department, lots of fun, really creative and hands on. So what I'm going to start with now is I'm going to go through the level three Cambridge technical in digital media, the, the specialism here at UTC Sheffield, obviously alongside engineering. So some key features of the Cambridge Technical in digital media, essentially it's a media production course. So you'll be learning how to make a range of different media products, including radio, graphic design, advertising, web design, animation, every media you can think of, you will have chance to make it. And there'll also be some media theory involved as well through your exams. Our examination board is OCR. And you have the choice in terms of guided learning hours what size qualification you do for this Cambridge Technical. So you can decide to do the extended certificate, which is worth one A level, and you can do that alongside art and or photography or product design. Popular option though, is for students to do the 720, which is the diploma. So that's worth two A levels. And again, you can do that alongside other A levels like English or art or photography. Whether you do the extended certificate or the diploma, you will have 12 hours a week, six of those on a Tuesday and six on a Thursday. Your year 12 year, your first year here with us will be your foundation year. So in this year, you will complete these five units 
as you can see, two of them are exams, media products and audiences, and pre-production and planning. You'll fit both of those in the January of your first year. Media products and audiences, we're looking at the industry, gaming, video, TV, film, um, understanding industry and how it works, and also some theory. For unit two, pre-production and planning, understanding how to plan and produce products um, in a vocational environment, and that's an exam as well. Now, what's great about your exams is they are the core, they're the foundation to your coursework units. So whilst you're studying the theory, the industry, how to make a product, plan and produce it, you'll also be planning and producing a range of products as well. So here are the three coursework units you'll be doing, unit three, 15 and 20. Now with unit three, create a media product. This is the mandatory coursework unit you'll be doing in year 12. Now the brief for that is you'll be making a new Sheffield based magazine in whatever genre you want to. Some popular ones are music, sport, hobby and lifestyle. So students tend to focus it on something they're interested in, opportunities to take photographs, opportunities to interview people, opportunities to be the graphic designer, the editor, the photographer, and to put this magazine together. Your brief for this will be making four pages. So you'll be expected to make the front cover, the content page and an original double page spread for this magazine. The skills you will develop on this unit is graphic design, photography, you'll also be the editor, Adobe Photoshop, InDesign and Illustrator are the softwares that you will be using, so we use the Adobe Creative Cloud here at NCC. You'll also be working with a client, you know, you will be out and about interviewing people as part of your magazine to make it as real as possible, because we're building a portfolio here. Um, and obviously communication, whether that's verbally speaking to your client or whether that's via email, interacting with them, arranging meetings in order to make that happen. And also as part of the Cambridge Technicals unit, you'll be learning a unit called Unit 15, which is titled Audiovisual Promos. This will be 60 guided learning hours. It's an optional unit. And the brief is based upon generally creating a music video for real life Sheffield musician or band. You could also make a fictional film of your choice as part of this promo or a promotional video for a real life product. Um, popular genres that we've looked at for the music videos and fictional films are indie, rock, pop, rap, horror, drama and alternative. The audiovisual promo will be three to five minutes long and it will feature a variety of camera angles and edits. Um, the skills that you'll be developing as part of my unit will be concept and idea generation. In addition, we'll be looking at the technical skills included with using audiovisual equipment, using professional industry standard cameras, lighting and sound equipment. You'll be learning editing skills using the Adobe Premiere Pro software, and we will be working with real life clients, and I'll explain a bit more on that later. Um, in addition, you'll be working on your communication skills and speaking with your clients. This is also something you'll be learning across your other units as well. Hi, so unit 20 you'll be doing with me, which is the advertising media unit. Again, it's a 60 guide learning hour unit, which is part of the Cambridge Technical and makes up part of that 360 or 720 hours that we talked about earlier. It's control assessment, so it's what used to be called coursework. So you're working on your work independently. Uh, meeting a deadline for moderation in the spring of year 12. And the great thing about Unit 20 is it's a multimedia unit. So you're not just focusing on one particular thing. You are developing an advertising campaign which allows you to uh, develop a variety of skills. So within this unit, uh, students cover, as I said, a variety of things from media analysis. So we start by looking at existing advertising campaigns, how they work and what advertisers do to sort of hook you in engage you to buy their products or see their film or whatever it happens it may be uh, and how that's done through things like graphic design photography film editing those films copywriting and so on and so forth and the students make those products so uh, to the side of the screen there you can see the work that Maisie mentioned in her video which was a uh, corporate promotional brochure and a student mail uh, mail out for a uh, notion out which is a voucher reservation scheme along the lines of um, booksy uh, also, students learn professional communication because when communicating with a client, we encourage them to have 
a real life client rather than sort of something made up. So uh, communicate with the outside world. They have to be able to email, take phone calls, even hold meetings in the past, uh, along with audio recording and animation where possible. And in that, in doing that, we work with the uh, most of the variety of the creative cloud software. So Photoshop, Adobe Premiere for video editing, Illustrator, audition for audio recording, and then recording the student's progress through blogger.com and doing the admin through Office. Now that's year 12, as you can see, hands-on, working with a range of people, making a range of products. So this now allows you in year 13 to specialize. So based on your experience from year 12 and the units you've done, you've now starting to have an idea about the career path you want to go on to, whether that's university, apprenticeship, or into the world of work. So this is where you now specialize. So everyone will do unit six, social media and globalization. So that's an exam you'll sit in the January of year 13, understanding how social media is used and to target audiences um, through a range of campaigns. Your pathways that you can pick between. So you've got move and image, which is very, very popular. So the mandatory unit being a short film. You'll also do a radio production. You will learn script writing which can be used for your short film or radio product. And you'll also learn how to do visual effects. Or if you are looking at more interactive products, more computer-based interactive pathways for you. So that's where you'll be doing um, website design. That's the mandatory unit. There'll also be a photography unit in there. You'll learn how to animate and make an animation product for a purpose of your choice. And also comic books, um, which is another popular unit on the interactive pathway. And these are just a sample of some of the units you'll be doing on each of the pathways. There'll be a few others that you will do as well. Now, who is this course suitable for? Now, if you're thinking about this Cambridge Technical in digital media, you need to be willing to collaborate with others and industry professionals. OK, you'll be out and about working with those either outside the building or, you know, as soon as permissions um, allow us in the building, holding meetings, castings, auditions, an aptitude for working and using computers and different software. We have a wealth of equipment here from DSLRs. We've got a dark room for photography. We've got some CGI, we've got a drone, we've got consoles, you know, we've got a full Mac suite. So we've got a range of technology here that you can use to make these amazing products enjoys or wants to learn about digital media. So as much as you want to learn how to make a range of different media products, also be willing to undertake the theoretical side too. In terms of where our students go on to, lots of students go on to university, but some students also go off and do an apprenticeship. So we've got film production, graphic design, animation, as you heard from Maisie, she's wanting to go off and do um, advertising. Matt, he's looking for apprenticeships in film. Web design, a few of our students have gone off to University of Sheffield to do journalism. Events and PR, there have been some apprenticeships that our students have gone on to do, either um, not just at university, but they have been some apprenticeships as well. Hi, everybody. Um, so with regards to uh, extended project, can I next slide, please, Mrs. Payne? Thank you. OK, so extended project, you've got a choice of uh, three topics. So you've got the investigation, the dissertation and the artifact. As you can see, with regards to the artifact, it's 1000 words plus the artifact. However, the time it takes to create the artifact may take longer than the dissertation. So what we ask is that students link it to whatever they are doing in CDM, and the clue is in the title really, that they do something that's an extended version of what they've already done. So for example, it could be focusing on photography, focusing on a sketchbook, but looking at something specific. And with regards to extended project, people tend to think that it's all down to a university pathway. We get lots of students gaining apprenticeships based on their extended project. And we do ask that you clearly look at your pathways, look at your future to work out whether you want an apprenticeship or a university course so that you can tailor your extended project to suit either an apprenticeship pathway or, or a university pathway. With regards to examples, so you've got lots of different examples. As you can see there, the artifact and both the investigation and dissertation are linked 
to CDM topics. Okay, so again, we are looking for things that you are already doing. There is also the opportunity to look at things that interest you, but the best projects, the most exceptional projects are the ones that are based on current CDM topics. So for example, um, key focus would be social media and the effects on society or the effects on teenagers of social media. Again, this could be part of a artifact or it could be a dissertation. But again, if you're making something in CDM, then the chances are you want to make something again for extended projects. So choose wisely with regards to the artifact or the investigation. With regards to art, so the art course is split into two separate years. So the first year you will study uh, the AS course. Now, different to lots of GCSE subjects, uh, particularly in art, is the fact that you will do art, craft and design on the AS course. So it will be a combination of artwork, mixed media, photography, sculpture and digital work. Even if you have chosen photography as an A-level, you'll still be doing some kind of photography in art. And we do find that both the subjects complement each other. So you are able to choose both photography and art at AS. And as you can see, with relation to unit one, we start off with skills building from September to December. So we build on the skills that you uh, have uh, gained at GCSE and then from January onwards, we move into the exam unit where you choose a topic from the exam board, created by the exam board, and then we follow that pathway, creating a portfolio with artists, with photographers, leading to, as with the GCSE, leading to a final 10-hour piece in May, and that will be your final piece relating to your portfolio. With regards to the full A-level, so hopefully um, we would ask that you consider the full A-level course and we find that most students like to choose and move on to the full A-level course following on from the AS course and it is a natural progression from the AS course. Again, you'll focus on unit one, personal investigation. There are a couple of elements to the personal investigation which are slightly different to the AS. So you'll still do the practical portfolio again based on art, mixed media, photography, sculpture and also digital work as well and you will produce the portfolio but you will also write a three to four thousand word investigation which is the related study and that is related to contemporary and historical art movements past and present and influences on society and culture both past and present. So it's key, the related study is important. So please don't let the related study put you off with regards to the three to 4,000 words. It is based on your personal progression as artists via contemporary and historical art. And finally, as with year 11, as with year 12, you will do the exam unit, which again is based on a topic of your choice, guided by the exam board. You will produce a practical portfolio we start the exam folder in February and in May, you will create a final piece based on your portfolio. This time it will be 15 hours and we usually require, it's over three days. Hopefully it's an enjoyable experience and it's not seen as an exam. It's just creating a fantastic final piece based on your A-level portfolio. Thank you, Mr. Colwood. So, so far we've told you more about the Cambridge Technical. Um, we've also now told you about the extended project, which is another qualification you can do in CDM and also A-level art. Um, I'm now going to pass over to Mr. Halliwell, who's going to tell you more about A-level photography, which we both teach. Okay, so we offer both the AS and A-level photography here at UTC. Uh, it's a... OCR qualification is an A-level as standard, so unlike the Cambridge Technical, it's, it fits under the actual label of an A-level course. And it's taught over five lessons a week uh, throughout year 12 and year 13, so you get a significant amount of time on your timetable based on the photography. Now, the, the course itself is broken down between a 15-hour exam, very similar to the art exam that Mr. Colwood already discussed, where the students are basically putting put together the culmination of their portfolio into 
a photographic exhibition based on a theme uh, selected from the exam board. But alongside that is the personal investigation. The personal investigation is where our students get to really put themselves into their photography. So they'll decide the theme, they'll decide how they want to approach it, the photographers they want to research, the art movements, photographic, photographic movements that are going to support the development of their work. The students go through a period of experimentation and development of their own ideas, looking at you know, contemporary photographers and some more classical photographers along the way. Now, alongside that, wherever possible, we do like to try and include at least one in input from uh, one of our local photographers, which generally tends to be uh, Duncan Philpot, who's a Sheffield-based photographer who works in the extreme sports industry. Uh, you might have seen his work around Sheffield's campaign for the outdoor city a couple of years ago, which he did most of that for. In terms of who it's suitable for, generally what we're looking for is somebody who is keen to pursue photography along both lines. So understand it as an artistic form, as uh, part of, almost as part of art as a larger movement. So the fact that, you know, a photographer's camera can be the same as an artist's brush in that they capture part of art through that um, and are influenced by those that have gone before, whether they be professionals, whether it be movements, whether it be certain uh, so, you know, societal events that have gone on the way. But alongside that is the technical side of it and the skills and techniques involved in photographic works and movement. And that can be digital. We do have, as uh, Mrs. Payne already mentioned, we do have a black uh, belt room upstairs, which uh, our students use uh, to do analog, analog photography and try that out as well. So it's about understanding photography as a whole whilst developing this portfolio of work, which can complement our CDM studies uh, hugely. And it's really useful for those students who want to go into journalism or advertising, photography and even film, because even though photography is the art of capturing a still image, framing, lighting, uh, composition are all fantastic skills to have when moving towards a career in film. Thanks, Mr. Halliwell. Uh, we're now gonna to talk to you lastly um, about our employer engagement um, and give you an insight in terms of who we work for um, and who we work with on a range of different projects. So first of all, as part of the uh, Unit 15 Audiovisual Promos Unit I mentioned earlier, um, you have the opportunity to work with live Sheffield musicians. Um, so real musicians that have been creating music over the last, you know, three to 10 years. Um, the clients we've looked at and worked with are, well, there's one called Dimitri, who we did um, a music video for last year. Um, and that was what our year 12 students worked on and they found it thoroughly enjoyable. And through that musician, they got an insight into the world of, well, mu the music industry really and how to create audiovisual products for them. And um, there's another man called the Death Rays of Ardea who's been going for a long time. Uh, the Sleezoids, there's a group called My Lo-Fi Heart who I know very well, who's been going for the last 10 years. Um, there's a new indie band that have been around since the Arctic Monkeys time called the Who Dares. Uh, there's another group called the Pulse Lovers as well. Um, the audiovisual promos that I've been doing, so I've got a range of briefs from these people. I've got tracks that you can work on in making your own, very own concept. Um, so it's a case of these guys wanting a music video. We speak with them, we ask them what they want, and they, they give us a rough idea and our students run with the idea and have much creative freedom in doing that. We found it very enjoyable. Um, as I mentioned, we made a video for uh, the sort of comedy character based musician Dimitri um, in his first week of uploading the video from what we made in the UTC, he got six, over 6,000 hits in a week, which is absolutely amazing. Um, so, yeah, he's, he's one of the clients we could possibly work with in CDM. So alongside that. We also work with a variety of organisations um, to put, have various inputs into the CDM course at level three. So some of those names you might recognise, uh, Warp Films, for example, um, a, a jewel in Sheffield's media crown, I suppose. They're responsible for films such as Four Lions, uh, Submarine, 
and they're about to release everyone's talking about Jamie. Uh, and they're a, you know they're a huge company. And uh, Mark Herbert, who's one of the creative directors, has been into been into UCC on numerous occasions. Talked to our students about what makes a good film, how they set up for a film, how they set up um, everything from organising a shoot through to making the Walt Films office in Sheffield look like a terrorist cell uh, holding pen in Pakistan for, for four lines. Um, and then we get that kind of input where the industry expert comes in and can deliver that way. So we get that from, from Walt, we get that from uh, Steel City Media. So Joe Bowman at Steel City does a lot of work around uh, extreme sports, particularly in the mountain bike industry. And he's talked to our students about what he has to do on an annual basis, traveling around the world, uh, covering a series of events. And then we get more sort of uh, hands-on and work experience opportunities. So our students have been out to the Children's Media Conference, which is the only one of its type, uh, type that takes place in Sheffield every year. And they've volunteered and helped run that. Our students have also been out to Sheffield Documentary Festival or DocFest as it's known. Uh, they've helped to run that, guiding people around, moving dignitaries around the building. I know one of our students was slightly miffed that uh, she missed out on taking Sir David Attenborough to one of his shows, but uh, it does happen. Uh, and then we get opportunities where to actually visit the industry. So Bauer Media, who own a variety of magazines, what most notably in our area, Harlem FM, have welcomed our, our students into their studios and given the opportunity to look around, spend a day with their marketing team, get used to working out that actually uh, a station like Hallam offers more than just putting your advert on the air, but they'll actually create the advert for you, which is an interesting day. So alongside that, when we're not working with people, we work for people. So our students have created a variety of different products for uh, a variety of different um, organisations. Most notably on there, uh, for the music fans, so following on from what Mr. Clayton was saying, the bottom right in corner there, the Sherlock's. Um, before they were a signed band, uh, one of our students contacted them and asked to make a music video for them. And in the process of making the music video, they became a signed band. And for the first six months of their career, their first music video that was on MTV and all the rest of it was what was created by one of our UTC students, uh, which is a few years ago. We've also worked for Fox Valley, which is the large new shopping centre out uh, in Stocksbridge, where Fox Valley approached our media students again and asked, if any of them were interested in making the Christmas advert to compete with the likes of John Lewis and all the rest of it in their store. So two of our students did that. They went out to Stockbridge, they filmed in store, they did interviews, they ended up taking some really nice drone shots as well. And Fox Valley have been using that pretty much until last year. And then larger charities like We Are Macmillan, so the Macmillan Trust and the South Yorkshire and Bassett Lord Cancer Alliance have been in and our students have created advertising campaigns for them. So on the one hand, our students get the input from industry, but they also get to contribute to the industry as well, which is massively interesting, but also hugely useful for things like portfolios and students going off to apprenticeship interviews and university interviews. So there we have it. You've now got an insight into not just what CBM is, but what it also includes, what other A-levels you can take alongside the Cambridge Technical in digital me media, whether that's at one A level or two A levels, including um, EPQ, you can take A level art as well, and or A level photography. And as you can see, the, the breadth of people that we work for and work with to support you in your studies and um, to make amazing products and importantly, amazing portfolios. So q and if we've got any questions um, in the chat, have we got any, have we got any questions so far? We're looking at the Q&A. Any questions so far? Not as if yet. Not as yet. Hmm. Okay. There's anything we've not covered. Um, so as a regular question we get asked by new students or prospective students is, do I have to go out and buy a load of equipment? Mm. Um, the answer to that is no. Uh, we have a variety of pretty much everything we need in the building. So we have everything from fantastic shiny Macs, so you can see behind Mrs. Payne there, uh, right through to all the software we need, all our cameras, recording equipment. I'm actually sat in studio too at the minute. Here's our studio, um, which is in a bit of a state at the minute because it's just been asset tagged. Yeah. Uh, we have an entire studio room, so we don't expect students to go out and purchase huge amounts of kit because we will lend it to you, we will allow you to take it out of the building and film or 
photograph or whatever it is you need to do uh, to complete your course. And that, that tends to be the question we get a lot. Unfortunately for some students, they, uh, they like to ask that question when their parents aren't around because then they can to mum and dad and say, oh, I've got to buy a new MacBook and a DSLR. Well, that isn't the case, unfortunately. Uh, we do like to have students to um, yeah, have access to the stuff here without bankrupting themselves. Uh, question there about uniform. Yeah. Um, it is smart business wear. So key stage four, so year nine, Year 9 to year 11, they have to wear a uniform in the UTC one. Um, in post 16, as long as it's formal, um, you can pretty much within reason wear what you'd like. Think of it like a job interview in terms of how you dress to come to UTC. If it's not something you would wear to a job interview, then it's not appropriate. So, you know, for the, for the, for the men um, in post 16, it is, you know, smart shirt, a tie, um, nice, you know, smart trousers. For the females, maybe a skirt and a shirt, or maybe um, some crop trousers and a nice top, um, but something that would ideally be that you'd wear to an interview. Um, in terms of the, the college day, so you would start at 8.40 and your last lesson of the day is at 3.30. But unlike your timetables now in year 11 or in key stage four, you're not always in a lesson. So it might be that on a Monday, you have art with Mr. Colwood, and then you have that for three periods, and then you might not have anything in the afternoon, okay? And then on a Tuesday and a Thursday, you'll definitely be in CDM from 8.40 to 3.30, but we give you breaks, we give you lunch, you know? <laughs> you're not in a lesson for all those hours, we promise. Um, so yeah, in post 16, your timetable is lighter, in the sense that you're not in lessons from the start of the day to the end. However, those gaps where you aren't being taught or you aren't in a lesson, that is your independent time. That is your time where you go out and meet your client. That's your time where you come and use the Mac to add things to your coursework. Um, so it's not necessarily a free, it's a chance for you to catch up and do any homeworks, projects you need to be working on in that time. This is Pink, and I just discussed with regards to um, tutor time as well and uh, yeah. post 16 tutor groups. So, um, as Mrs. Payne said, with regards to the school day, there is um, in there tutor time. Now, um, that is extremely flexible and hopefully built around what you request. Okay, so again, it will be time where you can reflect on things, but also focus on particularly UCAS applications, because we've had, uh, myself and Mrs. Payne in particular, have spent lots and lots of time, particularly this year, um, supporting students with UCAS applications. So you will get full support with your personal statements, full support with your applications. Mrs. Payne will work literally 24 seven to make sure that you meet the deadline in a positive way. Um, but also as well, um, I'm one of the tutors. I most likely will be your tutor um, and I am there to help and support you along with everybody else in the team as well. Okay, so it is um, not structured in the same way as Key Stage 4, so you're not expected to be in tutor time all the time and for example the year 13s don't have registration time. Okay, so if you're in your second year of post-16 you don't have registration in the morning so you can uh, prepare and focus and uh, get ready for period one um, instead of whereas the year 12s at the moment they still have registration but again with regards to what Mrs Payne was saying about business wear that has changed positively because of student feedback so previously we did used to have a policy very similar to key stage four but we do listen to students. Um, Mr. Reynolds and the powers that be do listen to students and things have changed um, positively in respect of student power. Definitely. Um, so yeah, post 16 did used to wear a uniform, but our student council, which you can also be part of, um, you know, changed the law if you like. Um, so now we wear at post 16 a smart uh, business business wear um, to reflect industry to reflect you know looking smart looking presentable yeah. you know um, whilst you're in the building and also whilst you're out and about um, liaising and networking for the range of products 
um, that you guys are going to be making over the two years. And that's what it's really about. It's about you being able to walk out of here after your UTC career and you've got a po portfolio. You've got something you can show to an employer for an apprenticeship or university. Look at what I can do. I can make a range of things. Um, and that's the opportunity we're giving you here. We're giving you the opportunity to specialise, but also to make a range of things and have a very broad um, portfolio in skills that you've, you've enjoyed, you've developed, um, and that you've progressed onto as well. I think it answers the question that was just appeared there about um, what's best about us compared to other institutions, isn't it? So you know, why, why are we different and special? Because, you know, we are dedicated to, to media, I think is the best thing. You've been here. I've been here from... from the start for eight years now and we've seen our, our CDM students come in um, from all sorts of backgrounds, all sorts of walks of life and gone to do great things and I suppose we get 100% of our students going on to either employment or the university or to apprenticeship um, at the end of post-16 so we have really good destinations for our students. Uh, the course we do is varied and allows our students to do a lot of different things. Um, we're well equipped um, <laughs> you know and our location the city center doesn't hurt either you know being able to go from here for photography or for or for filming for example and within five minutes you can be in the city center or you can be up on norfolk park for a, an outdoor scene or whatever you need so um but at the same time at the end of the day getting to the train getting to the bus getting home is just as easy so we're easy to get to we're easy to get away get away from in many ways to go and film and take the things you need to do uh and that really assist with what we do and like I say our, our students do some, some, some fantastic things as a result. Fab and I've got another question here um, I'll answer that live um, a copy of what we've been through today of course um, if we can and if I put my presentation or if I'll just type in in here um, if I send you my uh, my email address so that you can contact me um, it's a pain I know, <laughs> if you say it quickly, yeah, opain at utcsheffield.org.uk. Um, if you send me um, an email so I know who to respond back to, um, I'll answer and field any questions, any questions specific to Art and EPQ. I can, um, Mr. Colwood, I'm sure, would be happy to answer any questions. And obviously, uh, myself, Mr. Hallowell, and Clay Mr. Clayton can answer any questions in regards to the Cambridge Technicals. Um, do we have any more questions? So it looks like there'll be a, um, a link to a Google site with some of the material from this event available to you afterwards anyway for those Excellent. who signed up. Can I just mention again post-16 pathways, Mrs. Payne, just in relation to um, particularly in COVID time, shall we say. Um, now, please, 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 when you come to us at UTC, um, hopefully you will also have an idea of beyond UTC. So we need to tailor your education to suit whichever pathway you head towards and what we found at the moment uh, myself and Mrs Payne particularly Mrs Payne with regards to the last minute UCAS applications is down to Covid and the fact that unfortunately at the moment apprenticeships are few and far between but that's only because of Covid at present okay so please consider apprenticeships in the future please consider universities and we are not one or the other okay so um, apprenticeships are supported just as much as university applications okay so there will be there is lots out there but all I'm saying is that just at least consider both if you think about apprenticeship just consider university just in case of whatever happens in the future okay definitely I will support you and guide you in whatever pathway career you envisage yourself in being um, and being open-minded to the, the options available to you. They will change. What you decide to do in year 12 compared to year 13, it probably will change, but we'll help you and guide you um, to support where you end up going. So thank you so much, guys, for being part of our event um, this, this evening. My name's Mrs. Payne. 
we've got Mr. Halliwell, Mr. Clayton and Mr. Colwood. Um, so thank you very much for taking part and listening to our event today. Um, just to also say, if you haven't applied yet, um, you can apply through Sheffield Progress or you can apply through the UTC Sheffield um, website. Very easy, very simple. So again, via Sheffield Progress or the Sheffield UTC's website. And if there's no further questions, um, thank you again and we'll see you soon.